Hello Elementary, or Sherlock here with Elementary Airsoft, and this is going to be part two, maybe of three or four, I'm not sure how many parts this will be yet, but um, starting the reassembly of the SRS, we have our sort of air system here fitted onto the stock, or onto the receiver via the monopod slot. Um, I did use a shim here between the, the body of the gun and the um, adapter that I had custom made because apparently this and the threading on here sits a little bit differently than the um, original I guess black body or non minimized body so I suspect there may be some variants from gun to gun so you may need to shim either the outside here or between basically the head of the screw in the body there and I'd probably just use some styrene because it'd be easy enough to sand and or adjust to the size that you need but this is locked securely there's no rotational play here you can use um, a wrench here to loosen it or tighten it back up one other quick note of something that I did off camera is using Dremel and this is a emery polishing bit I did go through around all the edges and the seam lines here and I did dust them lightly because some of them there was a bit of a mold line from the when they cast these pieces so that'll just make it all a bit smoother and stuff when put back together so just a, a good simple little thing so this can sit this half and we shouldn't need to go back in here again so that's all together. Now for the mag release. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember which. I think this goes on the other side. Yeah. So this just drops through here. Takes the pin over here. And you may need to fiddle it around just a little bit to get it to fit. it's sort of like an angle based thing so it'll slot into the bottom right I think we're there should just be able to tap that in no come on so you're trying to you see this little bump out there you're trying to slot it into that blind Hole. So I'm going to try looking through the cracks here basically to see if it can get lined up. It seems awfully long. Is that right? Okay, it is longer because we have this cutout here. So it's that's on purpose. I did not remember it. I guess I assumed that when I had pulled it out that it started dropping free. So my apologies there. So on on your normal one, uh the pin will be shorter because this is a solid solid block in the receiver. So yeah, so that sticks up, so it can body out against the body here to keep it from coming out. And then comes your... Yeah, then your spring. And the mag release button for the other side. which this is just basically a grub screw that was loctited in. And here, I think it's a little bit of trial and error to find the, the right amount of rotations you need to do. So I'm gonna back it off like two. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm checking to make sure that when I push this in, that 
Oh, that tooth there drops away, so it'll release the mag. It might actually go back one more. I'll just set this together real quick, just to quickly double check that. So this sticks out fairly proud, pushes nicely. Actually, I'm going to pull it back apart. And one thing too that I want to do, I'm going to pull the pin here, and I'm going to put a drop of oil on our pin, so that. Um, everything moves freely and I don't have to come back in here again. Try and line this up again. It's a bit harder being that there's springs in there now, but there we go. Making sure that everything, nothing's binding anywhere here. in here, this button or this pivot will uh, play a bit nicer. So the next part is trying to remember and figure out which screws go where. Because there's one other key key point if you want your mag to, to drop free or not be as hard to remove from the mag well, you need to put in basically two small o-rings on these screws. Now from factory it did, at least they now seem to come with o-rings. My first gen SRS, the, the other one that I own, did not. So I used basically some washers to shim it. I think I may have actually modified gearbox shims to fit. But um, one of the o-rings here was destroyed so I, I found some other ones laying around my shop that would work. So yeah, you want this to be able to easily be removed. So we want to play around a little bit with that, but before that, we need to figure out which length the screws, and I think it's the short guy and sort of the medium guy. The really long ones go in the spots that go through the body. So I'm just gonna drop it in to check. And yeah, that comes out just to the other side check this guy too. He might actually be a little bit long. So let's also try another one. This gets a touch shorter. Yeah, and that seems flush, so this guy must go up here. It's a little bit of trial and error. Yeah, and that seems right, so just see if I can separate our halves here. I'm going to remove this one for now. So then on the front, I'll slip one of these washers over. And my other thought here was, once again, I mentioned a couple of times styrene. I really like the material. It's a pretty easy to work with, easy to sand, pretty malleable material. Um, is basically just make some of your own washers, you know, just drill it out to a size, sand it down until you get the right engagement. And I may end up doing that, but I just wanted to give this a go first. Because you can tighten these basically as much as you want. And I just did it this way because so the O-rings won't slip out and I'm not fishing around with it. go. Just double checking that I can see through the crack the o-rings are there. Take our Allen key. And grab a nut from my little parts tray. Just hold it in the other side with my finger and we can put this back together. So I'm just going to start with these two screws and sort of go back and forth until I'm happy 
with how the mag release button engages and how the mag drops. Might actually have to do the one up here too from the looks of things. Which I think maybe this bolt. Nope. Longer yet. I didn't separate all these by length. So I'm just going through them. I have my little parts tray, I guess, it's off camera. It's handy to keep little plastic bins or parts trays when working on this kind of stuff. So you can store each part. Okay, that hole is a little more captive. Just a good thing. And we'll be sure to tighten that guy down nicely. Just because I want it so that this part is being squeezed as tight together and this part's being squeezed as sort of as tight together as it was intended to be. Let's get that back in there. Let me check. Oh, that's not bad. Oops, it's a bit weird with the um, extended follower. So it's locked in, got a little bit of wiggle, it's not coming out, and it doesn't take much force at all. Um, definitely feels like you have to push it in a bit harder to get that sort of affirming click. Just going to check if there's any debris or anything. Binding. I really don't see anything. I also did notice here too, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but here we have a couple casting points. I may polish those up a little bit. And that'll probably also help. So I think those screws there are good. Yeah, and that locks in and you can see our BB extended BB follower just pushes up to the top there which is nice. So this will feed every round and I'm happy there. So let's go ahead and put the rest of everything back together. I'm just going to give it a quick feel along the seam lines here that I sort of sanded or uh, polished up with the emery bit, make sure those are all good. And I'll finish putting in the screws and then we can talk, start talking about installing the SDIK. Okay, so I got everything screwed back together. I will note that on the QD sling swivel points, that's the only ones I did add some blue Loctite to, just because if you have a QD swing swivel, it's going to try and rotate this some um, if it binds, and that may try and come out. And just another quick double check that you know our mag still goes in easy and comes out fairly easy, but I think it's enough that, um, you know, if you accidentally hit the mag catch, it isn't going to drop free, which I think is something that you'll want. Um, but yeah, so that is all set, so then let us move on to our next phase here, which is actually setting up and installing the Minecraft engine. So here's our stock internals. Here's the SDIK, my spacer tube, and I think we're going to start out trying the lighter spring. They do include two springs, a light spring and a heavy spring. Um, if you have issues with the light spring with consistency, I mean, try the heavy spring because it's still, we still have to propel this. And if it's too light and or if there's too much friction involved, you may still want to use the heavy spring. I don't remember what I used on my first build. And then two, I'm going to pull this out. This is what they call their silencing seal. Um, basically, it goes up here to deaden the impact um, of the, the engine sliding forward when it releases with the spring. So, there's that. And here we have our stock 
piston. So piston, spring guide, spring, all the original stuff. I'm just going to take these out of the picture because they will not be used. Here are cylinder and cylinder head. I'm probably going to go through and clean this real quick. Yeah, which is all cast of one piece. That's what this looks like. Uh, nozzle machine down, which is an improvement I think over their previous ones. Also interesting enough, this is now a cast piece. So I know one of the other, um, this is basically the locking lug that runs in the, the track in here and will lock it in the forward position. Some people like to, previously it was basically a small Allen uh, key or like, like an M3 I think maybe an M4 socket head that would ride in that rail so you could remove that out which just makes it a little bit easier because you know you don't have to have it perfectly indexed to pull it back and then putting like a, a slide tight material up here on the top for it to ride against so it won't ride against the aluminum because that's what this bolt here will stop it from doing but uh, this is a solid piece so if you want to do that you'd have to grind that off and I'm not sure if that's something that I want to do just yet, so I'm going to leave that for now. But um, give me a second, I'll clean this up and sort of do a little bit more prep and be right back. Okay, so now I've had that cleaned up and we have a couple of components. So first we have, I guess, just this little ring. This is the basically the ceiling component that our SDIK cylinder, if you will, will seal against, and this seals against the body, so you have an airtight seal when the air gets released. So this seals here, this seals to this, so this whole system is sealed when the air gets released out the nozzle, which should be seated and sealed against your barrel. And then this is, I think, just a spacer for whatever reason. Um, I think it's to keep this forward is more so, and that's why it has so many O-rings. But just to help things, I'm going to use a little bit of grease. And just because um, Mancraft, at least initially, recommended the, the Tech T gum salve, which is a paintball lube, but realistically, pretty much any decent synthetic grease will work just fine. I'm going to coat both the outside and the inside a little bit because the inside will seal against this o-ring up there. I guess we'll zoom in a little bit. May help. I'm just going to push this and you know what? We're going to also put just a little bit on the inside because I th think the inside may not be a coated surface. so. Just get a little bit on there because I did clean it off because I didn't know if uh, we had different greases at play here and I did not want them to have a conflict. Actually, well, I'm thinking about it too. Shoot. Oh, that's greasy. Should Teflon tape this. Uh, no, never mind. It does have an O-ring up top, I think. Yep. It's so O-ring up top, so we'll lubricate that just a touch. Just because I want to make sure that this has a good air seal. So there's no leaking in any part of our system. Because in the world of snipers, it's compounding all the small little things you can to net a larger effect or change. That's really the, sort of the goal of that. And then just down here, just to make it go in a little bit easier, just lubing that brick of O-rings there. And this just slide in. And that will hold basically our ceiling component where it needs to be because this is going to be much harder to remove, but you could pull it out if you really wanted to. It's just not going to slide back by friction. That feels like it's seated nicely. So 
So now we're going to start entering the world of math. So this gun in particular takes a 303 millimeter barrel, which is more or less the, um, I think the VSR, uh, the bullpup, well not the bullpup, VSR G spec um, takes a similar length barrel, but so basically this whole chamber here of the SDIK is basically, you can think of it as a measuring cup. It measures that amount of air, pull the trigger, basically this moves forward, pulls the plug out of the front, and it dumps that whole amount of air. Now given that this is sort of designed to work from anything up from like the one that takes like a 700 millimeter barrel to the one that takes a 300 millimeter barrel, we've, I've got some of this, this is what they call their volume reducer. Basically, a, it looks like PEX with electrical tape wrapped around it. So we're going to use this to reduce the volume of that measuring cup. And I have their formula jotted down here, and you can grab this off their website as well. Woo. But basically, it's 6,500 minus the value of 80 times the length of your barrel in millimeters divided by pressure in bars, and then this whole thing divided by 500. So, relatively knowing from how other HPA systems and stuff in the past worked, I was targeting 110 PSI, which is 7.58423 joules, not joules, um, bars. So then putting that into the equation, basically I come out with that I need 6.6 .6 centimeters of this tube to be about volumed right. So I was trying to pick apart this equation. I believe your, our 6500 is um, the volume of this chamber and then we're dealing with 80, which I think they're using that as a flat factor of the area of your barrel. So, you know, if you take area of a circle times length, you get the volume of the cylinder. But if you look at like a 6.01, its volume is, it's only like 30 or a bit less than that. So I think they're using sort of the same rule of that you use in the AEG that you want like a certain percentage higher of volume because you don't want just the exact amount. So this whole thing is a little bit of guessing game and this will just help efficiency a little bit. It'll help muscle report be a bit quieter because you don't have a ton of air. It'll also help reduce jewel creep which in my opinion it's it's something that happens but it isn't something that you should build for and try and maximize. Yes it's technically a way of cheating the system but it's also potentially dangerous, especially when we're talking about high pressures and the world of snipers. So, I'm just going to grab my calipers here, try and get this guy flat, and measure out 6.6 .6 centimeters, or 66 millimeters. And because my barrel is a 6.01, I technically think that I could and or maybe should go a little bit proud. So I might bump it up to like 68, 69. Just because I feel like it's once again too also a bit easier to start a bit bigger. So I'm gonna add an extra three millimeters just on a hunch that I will want it. Got that measured out. I'm just going to carefully cut through here. At this point, I'm wishing I had a nice PEX cutter. Which apparently, there we go. This uh, tube is pretty stiff. Or my knife is dull, or both. Which is honestly probably what I'm banking on. Okay, 
So now to install this, I'm going to carefully remove the what they call the needle. And then this should just unscrew. It's quite a long thread. And in here you can already see there's sort of like a nylon, I guess, bushing or delrin. And I think that's already a volume reducer. So this is going to slap in there. And just to make it go in maybe a little bit easier, I'm also going to grease it lightly. Um, I'm also going to check and make sure I don't have any burrs anywhere because I don't want that coming off or getting stuck in here. But this should just sort of fit in there. It's a bit tricky because, like I said, it's, it's a bit bent. So I'm just going to put the screwdriver and hopefully. Um, actually, I'm, I'm still a little bit concerned. I'm going to push it back out. I'm going to try getting her back out here. Yeah, well, let's see. I'm, I'm just slightly worried because it had that memory or curve built into it that it's going to rub against the needle and just add basically unnecessary friction. So let's... I really don't feel anything in there. Okay, so with this in here, I'm gonna just sight through it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything sighting through it, so... I think we're fine, but um, otherwise I would suggest, you know, just hit it with a heat gun or blow dryer for a bit. It'll soften it up, get her straight before you put it in there. That was arguably dumb on my part. Should have thought of that beforehand. So now this is ready to go. I'm just going to make sure this is nice and snug. And then here comes the other part which is their silencing seal. I'm going to opt to use the larger of the two O-rings. They have two diameters here. And where this goes is basically, and once again I'm going to just coat it with a little bit of grease just so it stays in good shape, is it goes over here and then just sits down there. So basically when this slams forward It'll hit the rubber on that front ring rather than the machine metal there. So it'll help make it a bit quieter. So now we can put this whole assembly realistically into the gun and then we just have to size our hose. So this is done. So I'm going to just take a little bit on the outside. It doesn't need to have a ton. This will just help it slide easier and not bind on anything and keep it protected to an extent from the elements. And there still is a little bit of grease inside. Yeah, so then you're going to need to put it off a safe. So you can squeeze the trigger, so you can get past the trigger sear, and that's in. Okay, now I'm going to also lightly lube up the spring, because this isn't any fancy or coated spring, so it's liable or susceptible to rust. This goes on here. Actually, we're going to, it's already lubricated. And I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure they actually use this exact same stuff from appearance. Um, this stuff is sort of thin, but still quite 
sticky, if you will. So where you put the grease, it tends to to stay rather nicely, which is, I think, why they like it. And like I said, too, there's probably other synthetic greases that will work just as good. This one just happens to work really well. Then we're going to go ahead and insert this in here. So here comes the tricky part. I'm actually going to go grab from my other SRS that I was testing with. Um, this, so I have a, a gauge of how long I need to make my tube. And once again here too, is like you have more, but if you can skip the part where you have to take off this little nut and then you know, re, re get it on the hose barb, why not? And I'm going to just use this heavy duty pair of scissors. This hose is really small. I'm just gonna take it here and just make sure we're getting the same amount or just a touch over. Which actually is easier said than done given the fact that this is wanting to flex on me. So I think right there. It's not pinched off or anything, though it isn't perfectly square. So I'm just going to square it up with a knife. There we go. So that is clean. Put this together. Still zoomed in. So I'm going to close up that. Set this back aside. Go back to the other gun. Set our O rings back aside. And now, here, this should just have enough. And I'm going to insert it into our quick disconnect. Because these things can actually go quite far in, and they actually need a reasonable amount. Okay, so looking at how this lines up, because this is going to sit a little bit further, I can see already that I have too much by almost a quarter inch. But keep in mind that this will be a little bit kinked. So I need to pull a little bit more off. Which that should be about right now. So it needs to go far enough in so that you can seal. And then this guy just screws in like so. This is very much like a banjo fitting. See that all winds up there. And we have our bleed valve as well. So for now, just to, to sort of, I guess, dry test everything, I'm going to pull the needle back a little bit so I can hook this guy in. And then plate number two can come on. And I know, yes, it still needs to be done is, um, the uh, locking these into place. I will get there, but I'm just finishing our testing here first. Make sure everything's together as we want it. Don't mind. Because we really don't have too much option here. What are you binding on? So 
that's there. And you should rotate a little bit. That realistically can kind of do whatever it wants. Looking here, I might actually need to pull out more of um, this material because I'm seeing that it's just touching our pressure release or our our valve there. So 